This episode of Hammerlock Podcast with Tyson Dukes is brought to you by Hammerlock Apparel. Visit hammerlockapparel.com today. On today's episode, we are going to Mexico. We talk about Mexican wrestling culture. We talk about how tough Mexican wrestlers are. And Tyson tells a story about wrestling in Toronto at a Mexican festival. It's Mystico in peril. Let's go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. I'm Scotty D here with another episode of Hammerlock Podcast with our good friend Tyson Dukes. How you doing, man? Doing great, man. I'm doing very well. This is a very exciting day of can- again. Uh, we're we're going worldwide. We went to England. We went to the UK last week. This week, we're heading to Mexico for CMLL. Um, I'm very excited about this one. This guy is my favorite uh, luchador uh, that we're going to be. Um, going over today and uh, putting his match out there. He passed away a couple of years ago. We'll talk about this as we get through this match. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but uh, one of the one of the tragic stories of like going too early, dying too early, uh, kind of a tragic story, but uh, I'm very excited. I hopefully, hopefully people enjoy this match as much as I do. I'm sure they will because it's just, it's, it's like I said before, it's standing out, somebody standing out and being a little bit different. As uh, most luchadors are like, do a lot of high spots and a lot of like flipping and stuff like that. Pero is one of those guys that uh, would not. He's the brawling type, and there's a few that have made uh, legendary status. His father made legendary status, and he made legendary status with it at a young age. Um, and it's it is fun to watch. This one is a lot of fun to watch. Right on. So if you want to watch along with us, you can currently find the match on YouTube. It is called, and um, it, it, I know we had a little, uh, Tyson's French accent on the last episode was a little suspect. I guarantee you my Mexican accent or Mexican pronunciation is going to be a suspect on this one. It's Mystico versus Hio del Perro Aguayo, uh, and it's on the YouTube channel is Ray Leo 619 The match is 32 minutes and 50 seconds. How bad did I butcher that name? You know why I, I was I almost popped for that. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't as bad as my terrible French accent. As uh, I was really hoping that you would do something real bad there, but actually <laughs> no. not not bad at all. I, uh, all right, well. All right, I practiced a little bit, but I was uh, I wasn't sure how that was going to come for out. The win. <laughs> there you go. Damn. Uh, so yeah, get that lined up if you want to watch along. Um, you're going to have to educate me for sure on the, uh, some Mexican wrestling here, if you don't mind. We talked about in the one episode uh, in Japan about how they don't necessarily have traditional good guy, bad guy type dynamic. And then we talked a little bit about it last week with the match in the UK, how they do. Um, and it was just more s- subtle maybe than what you see in North America. What's the deal with the uh, Mexican style? Mexican style is now we talk about um, uh, it's a in Canada we talk about there's this old meme out uh, that is out there and in Japan it's a sport in Canada it's a tradition in Mexico it's a religion uh, they take it there and then they talk about the US but they make the US sound real bad. So we'll leave the U.S. part out because I don't want any of my U.S. Uh, my U.S. listeners to um, think that I'm dogging on them. I'm not going to dog on it. I don't. This is not about dogging. This is about education more than anything. Um, but uh, in Mexico, uh, wrestling is very religious. It's a very religious thing. You'll see that in if you uh, if you go through um, many matches of lucha libre. There are saints and there are demons. So the bad guys are always uh, demons. Uh, the good guys are saints. That's the way it goes. Hmm. Santo being one of the, he wears a silver mask. He, he's, um, he's a good guy. And, of course, I mean saint. And then there's Pentagon, which is, of course, uh, like you're dealing with uh, demonic forces. Um, so the, it's, it's very much a religious-based uh, uh, sport. However... However, in, in Mexico, like they do the Festival of the Dead, being La Parca and stuff like that, 
um, uh, good and evil have have a place, and that they there is balance between them. So you'll find uh, when you watch this match and you have commentary and you listen to the crowd, they are very split. They're very much for both sides. Uh, Perro's very very popular, anyways. He's got that Steve Austin kind of vibe where he's the bad guy, but everybody loves him. Um, but uh, they love Mystico as well because Mystico is the traditional all white wearing uh, angelic uh, good guy. So it's it's really it's a really weird it's really weird because most people should be booing uh, Pero, but by the end of it they, they don't they don't really they don't really boo they they find the balance. But it's Rudos, which is the bad guys, and Technicos, hmm. which is the good guys, and it's it's very much a religious based. But there is a fine line of people know that there has to be good guys and there has to be bad guys, and they respect both. It's weird. It's odd. It's very cultural. It's uh, it's very much not the same as here in Canada, where there is definite heels and faces, and you always boo the heels, always cheer the faces, kind of deal. Right on. I find it fascinating that, like you said, it's cultural, and different places have different dynamics of how they present, like the good versus evil story. So that's always interesting to me. Um, assume everyone's got this thing ready to go. You want to start it off, or are you ready? You have anything else you want to add before we get rolling on this one? Uh, you know what? I just want you to, uh, like like you did last time, Scotty, you t- took a look at the World of Sport ring. It was a 16 by 16 uh, bad boy, and it's super short, and it's in for a close contact combat of wrestling. This one is going to be, I, th- I do believe, now don't, don't quote me on this, but I do believe that uh, CMLL, this is a big company in Mexico, uh, their ring is 22 by 22, I do believe. And it is hard as a rock. It is, they're, they're very much, they, like in Mexico, wrestling is real. And I, <laughs> it's so funny that you'll look at re- Mexican wrestling and it's the furthest thing from looking real. But these people believe that this is a uh, legitimate. This is a legitimate sport to these people. Kayfabe is really something to, uh, it is real to these people they believe that it's real and that that ring that ring is as hard as cement that's why a lot of a lot of bumps that you'll see this this is the you have to respect them because it's easier to fall on the floor than it is in that ring it is hard as a rock and it's also very very big because most most contests in mexico are uh six man tags there's a lot of multi-man tags happening, so they need a lot of space to do all the crazy high-flying spots that they do. However, this is a blow-off feud, uh, so it's mano a mano, which means hand-to-hand combat between two single wrestlers, uh, and it's always two out of three falls. Uh, Mexico believes in the two out of three falls kind of uh, philosophy, which is always great. And it's always kind of a neat, neat uh uh, kind of perspective of how wrestling should be or, or was done. Cool. All right. Well, with that said, let's get it rolling and jump into this bad boy. So I'll count her down from five, five, four, three, two, one, play. So right away, there's going to be some uh, promos. And unless you know L'Espanol, <laughs> I don't expect you to uh, understand the promo. So we'll just talk through it. Uh, Mystico, you're seeing Mystico right now in the white mask. He's um, he's very I like a very talented high flyer, very exceptional in ring when it comes to high fly skills. Uh, Pero is one of my favorites of all time. This is the luchador. He'll be coming up here shortly. Uh, Pero means dog. Uh, Pero de Mal, which is um, his uh, kind of like his faction, which they broke away from CMLL and they started their own thing where they would just work as uh, free agents and do shows for like Dr. Wagner and uh, different places in Mexico. And that's uh, it's Paro de Mal means uh, sick dogs. And it was an actual faction because their t-shirt sales were through the roof so much so that I'm not a fan of like buying if people give me t-shirts, I'll wear them. And I love wear my wrestling shirts and supporting guys, but I don't usually pay for them. Uh, this show, this shirt that he has on now that you see Perro coming to the ring in, I actually wanted to buy that. That's the first ever <laughs> since I was a child. I almost bought that. Uh, I did not though. I stuck to my, my uh, being stubborn that I'm not going <laughs> to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> buy someone else's merchandise and find that rude. 
But, uh, yeah, see that shirt? I wanted that shirt real bad, Scotty. That's like uh, – so if you're thinking Christmas gift, uh, that's uh, – that's, just keep that in mind, would you? <laughs> right on, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Noted. The uh, What's with the right. – is that his valet there, the girl, or is they uh, like ring girl type thing? Oh, you're the best. See that? Now, I love this because I would just pass by this. I would blow by this because this is – I just uh, – I'm a, like I know the I know the sport and how they are. Yeah. By the way, Pero has like one of the greatest builds right now in pro wrestling. That build right there is my favorite look. Not overly chiseled but like really muscular. Yeah. No, everyone, in, Scotty, in uh, Mexico comes out with val- – they have valets. They have round girls. So they have uh, – they usually have people coming out with the, the sign – saying like technical so they tell the people technical if they're good guys or bad guys every one of the wrestlers comes out with them sometimes they come in a parade of women they're like uh attractive latino women would would uh, escort them to the ring they have a bunch of them like and they work for it and they dance on the on the rampway and everything this mm-hmm. being a, a feud though it's only one each they only get one each instead of the normal eight to six that they usually have okay. of course we're starting hot as you see watch this oh back body drop on a guardrail because why not right because that ring is harder than there <laughs> that's how yeah so look there is no movement i want you to watch this ring this ring has no that corona thing is probably the softest thing about it is just the the beer the beer logo is the softest thing great job you now this is why i love Perro so much he's a brawler he's not a high flyer and the dude is so explosive and like that is it's so missing from wrestling he's very very aggressive you're going to see him rip and tear at mystico's mask which is also a traditional thing where their mask is their religious, it's a religious thing. So to tear off a mask is, there's no greater disrespect than um, tearing out a guy's mask. Another thing is there's no uh, bigger, uh, bigger uh, dishonor than losing your mask in Mexico. It's a real deal. They get paid more money when they have a mask versus mask contest and they finally have to lose their mask. They get paid uh, quite handsomely in Mexico to lose their, to lose their hood, as we call it. Mm. As you can see, Pero will follow the rules. You see, like he'll bring them back. There's always uh, now. I don't know here. Um, that like he'll always come back for the the count of ten. He always goes back to the ring. He understands that there is rules to abide by, even though he's one of these wild wild animals that is just will bring the fight to you. And as you can see, slingshot in the stairs, throws him back in the ring. Pero is one like just his father was also a legend. His father is still alive. Uh, Pero Senior is one of those uh, one of those old school brawling type uh, pro wrestlers as well. So his son is actually uh, followed in his footsteps with the boots. As you can see, the boots have like like there i do believe they're like boots with the the fur on the on the top of them so mm-hmm. it looks like they're like he's like a barbarian type guy and of course uh he gets enough heat he gets a little pace now he's gonna let mr go fly as you can see look at that right to his feet brilliant that young man was brilliant brilliant on the, they they talk about mr go having a bad attitude and not working with people but that aside all that stuff aside because we don't really talk about that here uh we just want to respect the man's work it, like he was a very talented very talented guy um and there you go moonsault by mystico both are down on the floor as you can see that floor that's not mats as you normally are used to seeing in uh wwe where it's all covered in mats so if you think all these fly, these, these jumps to the floor, oh, it's padded, it's blue padding. It is not. It is hard as rock, as that ring is. Uh, <laughs> as Mr. Go gives Pero this a body slam, and that ring does not budge. Yeah. It, is, it is absolute. Like, I do believe it is on a cement block. I do believe it. Oh. Um, <laughs> see that? Look, there Nothing. is no movement. Nothing. Yeah. No movement. The dirty miss suplex and a great German suplex. And I love this. I love this kind of stuff. Like that's why, that's just why I love Perro. Look at that. That's such aggressive vibe. Ripping a <laughs> man up by his mask, two dirty German suplexes. And he's going to go for his finish, which was his father's finish, a double stomp to the stomach. One, two, three. That's the first fall. That's the first fall in the, in the three fall uh, best out of three. Uh, series which is yeah. uh, I, as you can see the 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 noisemakers and stuff like that those are 
all fans of the Rudos. So they're they're actually into the bad guys. And yeah. the, like the t-shirt sales for the that t-shirt that I love so much was a huge hot seller. Like a Steve uh, on Austin 316 shirt was uh, it's the same. It's equated to the same in Mexico. Yeah. Very popular. I'm trying to see off the top of your head. Do you know what year this is? I'm trying to find it, but I don't see it anywhere. Mm. Like it looks like that um, late say, 90s, late 90s, maybe, or a little no, later. No, no, no. The Mystico has only been around. It's uh, in in the 2000s. This is, is a, yeah, this is a 2000s event. Um, because you can never go by style of people's clothes out in the I guess, audience. yeah, Mexico. Yeah, we're be... talking total different culture, <laughs> yeah. right? So they're going to be sporting different look. Um, yeah. yeah, I do believe it's uh, like within the realm of like a – Early 2000s, so okay. like your 2007, 2008, around there. Don't yep. don't quote me on any of that, but it's uh, one of those good. I've been watching it for a while, so as they're going through the replay, they they will replay, and I love this. They're going to show it here in a second that how devastating the Paro's double stomp to the belly is. Like kids, you don't have to go to the top rope. If you ever seen that Bruce Lee movie where he does the double stomp on the guy's chest, it should be enough. If you legit stomp on a guy's chest. That should be enough to finish. There's no need to get on the top rope and jump off and risk your own ankles or blowing out your knees or like slipping and smashing that guy's head. There's a, and like, you can make a finish out of anything. And like, that's the problem nowadays is that a lot of these guys think that bigger is better. Well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe simple um, being simple and simplistic is better mm -hmm. because if that's a, like a real fight. The simple punch in the face is something that will finish a person, <laughs> not a flip. Not a flip over him into a double drop kick. It's not. It's not. The, it doesn't have the same effect. Mm -hmm. The uh, yeah, I think you're. I'm looking here it's on his Wikipedia page, and you had a, they had a bunch of matches. But you have 2005 to 2010 range is probably where this was right in there. Yeah, yeah. So that I yeah, I'd be that would be about correct. Um, just by the style, and, and I remember watching this like. I watch this match a lot. Like earlier on, uh, when I was like, this is what got me hooked on this stuff. I actually wore uh, black trunks for a while with the same neat elbow pad sleeves because I don't take away from everybody like everything. But uh, for, for a while, I did the elbow pad sleeves because of Paro. Paro is one of those guys that kind of influenced that kind of look because I love that the idea of the black plain black trunks. Um, and then those elbow pad sleeves. However, I'm not going to rip everything the man does. The idea is to be inspired and take away from people you enjoy and you respect without <laughs> carbon copying everything right. they do. Right. So now we're starting match two. As you can see, there's a scorecard there. The Paro's on the, on the board with a win. And, of course, right away as they start round two, He's ripping and tearing at the mask. So there's a big tear in Mystico's mask as he's up in the tree of woe. And now hop the tree of woe with that drop kick. You're not going to see much science with Pero too. You're not going to see um, the crazy John Cortez style holds and stuff like that. And that's, that's another thing for everybody to learn about wrestling. There's so many different styles out there. And it's about enjoying uh, everything from every part of the country, all countries, different styles, different blends to make your own and to make your to uh, get a good range. Because uh, Pero isn't that guy. He is not going to be the guy that's going to put top wrist, wrist locks on you. But he is going to be the guy that kick you in the head <laughs> and like, double stomp you in the chest. Yeah. Right. Of course, here we go. Mystico is going to get fire up a little bit of comeback. He's going to pull the hair that I know people think that's uh, you shouldn't be doing that because he's uh, he's a baby face. But after somebody rips at your mask and tears a hole in your mask, there's a little bit more passion to it. And these guys are fighting, uh, giving it all they got because this is one of those blow off type matches. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, look at that. Look at that. that Almost cool. loses his balance. Right. Almost loses his balance. Catches himself on the top. And then uh, performs that nice little plancha to the outside, catch him peril. There's going to be a spot here a little bit later on where he does a suicide dive, and it will blow your mind because uh, it's it's what a suicide dive should look like. Uh, I'll just say that. <laughs> cool. And once we once we get to it, uh, you'll understand what I mean, Scotty, of how he takes it, how Mystico jumps at him, and how the cell is. 
because it should be it should be like a missile you that guy should be like a uh like a missile coming at you mm-hmm. what i don't the you what uh, the one takeaway that i'm not a real fan of oh here we go nice nice little hold there puts him in a submission and right away he taps out or verbal verbal command tap out um one thing that I, I, I do I, I would have liked in this match is Mystico is the baby face, but like after these planches, he never he seldom throws uh Paro back in. That's one of those things where I would like if you're going for the win, I would ex- I would expect you to get it like pull him put him in the ring, try to go for a pin, that stuff. But we're talking about a whole different culture of how wrestling is and uh, they go for more they're more flash. Mm-hmm. They go for a lot of flash. And that's why Perro's so great and stood out so much is because he, he was a substance guy. He was uh, very much pin you and smash the holy hell out of you uh, kind of vibe. Now, this is the end of round two. And, of course, they're going to go these replays a lot. Of course, that plunge and they'll show the submission again where he, he goes into a head scissors but then catches into an abdominal stretch uh, from a standing position. So uh, while we're talking about that, Perro, of course, uh, has passed away. Uh, I think I believe it's uh, it's about five years now. I think I do believe it's about five years. Perro has been – uh, gone, uh, died of a heart condition. He had a heart attack in the ring. Rey Mysterio was with him in the ring, and uh, there was a lot of reports out that it was Mysterio 619 that um, uh, hit him, hit his head, and uh, killed him. But in fact, it's all just you got to watch what you believe and watch what you read. Uh, if you watch uh, online, if you watch the slow mo of it, he never even makes contact with Peril. Peril is already. Um, already into into heart failure uh when he was hanging on the rope so um way too young in his 30s uh had a a, a great career could have been uh one of the all-time I, I do believe he could still be a legendary uh status as people still remember him even guys like me that are not even for the country um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a shame. It's a shame for uh, us to lose guys. We've lost animal, animal. We just lost animal, um, and now to lose guys like this when they're so young is uh, quite a tragedy. But yeah, definitely. And you're bang on. Uh, it was March twentieth, two thousand and fifteen. Was that there match that he passed away on? There we go. Yeah. So, of course, we start round three, and then Perro comes out of the block. Desperation, as you can tell, because he never really is a high flyer. He missiles and goes for that uh, drop kick, like that John Woo, as they call it now, where it's just you go to your back drop kick, but he misses. He hits the uh, top rope and then wipes out. Of course, Mystico's on him, giving him some heat. Um, Here we go. Always showing the size. The show, size difference is uh, usually usually it's a, a tackle spot. When the guy's running, he's doing the tackling. The other guy's bumping. But in this case, it's not going to be that way. Look at the pow! Look at the explosion on that arm drag, uh, where he does the pass by, which is overdone nowadays. We won't talk about that right now. <laughs> but it's overdone. But that pass by into the arm drag into a nice little another arm drag. Um, of course. It goes for his – okay, here we go. Here we go. I believe this is it. That's a suicide dive, everybody. Kids, <laughs> this is how you do a suicide dive, and that's how you take a suicide dive. You take it like a, it's a human missile, like someone a, – a goddamn human bullet coming at you. Mystico goes – launches himself out there as soon as he makes contact with the chest. And, of course, Peril gives him a, his chest and a platform to push off of. Watch. You're going to show him slow-mo. As he pushes off, he gets his feet. Wham. So he goes right to his feet. And oh. then Peril launches himself into the crowd. Jesus. Absolutely brilliant. This is how wrestling should be done right there. You see that? That looks real. That looks yeah. legit. And this yeah. is why I want people to check out this match because it is based uh, – this is the – when I talk about high fly and high fly done properly, that's high fly done properly. Yeah. It, uh, it fall into those chairs like that. There's no way to make that comfortable. That's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. Of course, we, we don't know because they showed the replay a couple of times. We don't know where the cutoff was where Perro's now up on him. He goes for a pin, but then Mystical goes for a pin, but he catches him. Uh, 
but somehow they turn the heat around. Of course, the, the ref is a little bit slower on these counts, which is great because it's adding to drama. A lot of people don't like that. They like the very quick counts. However, in Mexico, it works because they, uh, as Pero just keeps kicking his feet, kicking his feet, uh, really selling that this could be it. Um, and then it just makes, it adds for a little bit of drama. Uh, of course, he goes for two false, false finishes where he goes for the pins. He kicks out of both. The only thing that I do not understand is why the, why the sell off of that, like where he was selling and then just took a body slam when it was all he was doing was taking a pin. Now, that's a, that's a really stiff <laughs> <super> blow, <laughs> like off the second rope. Obviously, you're not going to go to the top rope. These guys are going right into false finishes now, as you can tell. They get some near fall pins. Misco is going to go with the high fly and the, the nice little head scissors into a small package, whereas Perro just going to superplex him off the second rope and then go for it again. Here we go again. Brain buster type uh, suplex is going to hold on, rip him up, go for a second one. There's a snap suplex into a pin. It's going to hold them. Of course, the ref is going to wait for those shoulders to go down, which is great. He doesn't wait for it. Like, he, that's what wrestling is, kids. You got to pin a guy's shoulders. If his shoulders are up, there is no pin. And that referee knows it. Yeah. And then Pero knows it, pulls the shoulder down. These are just little little points to the part. Like, this is what makes uh, wrestling look a little bit better. And that's why these guys drew money. Like, CMLL, CMLL was at the top of its game when these guys were on top. I mean, this is where their money was made. There was their top heel and their top baby face. Nice little uh, ode to Jericho with a springboard drop kick to the outside. I do believe he goes for, like, the seated, like, the oh. Bronco Buster which is like old school. That's how Bronco Buster used to be right there. <laughs> very, very charismatic. Pero is a very yeah. charismatic individual. His fans loved him just as much as they hated him. Um, of course, he leaves Mystico on the outside. Uh, again, not a fan. Not a fan of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, if you let's capitalize on the fact that you uh, risk life and limb that's one of my takeaways on the negative side of things can't i can't complain about their work but that's one of those things that i want to uh he wanted to capitalize on like bring him in the ring of course it's because they want to get into that uh, that power bomb spot which kind of got messed up a wee bit uh, but that's a lot of that's a lot of dude coming at you at high velocity uh catches him into a, a seated power bomb and does paro uh, he's working them over. The one thing to take away from Pero, though, is uh, the pace. His pace is very uh, – he explodes, which makes him look even faster. But then when, he's, he, when he settles down the action, uh, it's a really uh, easy, um, slower pace so that you see everything that's going down. He's very good at what he does. Oh, man, that's a dirty powerbomb. That's a dirty powerbomb. Catches him in a victory roll position, reverses that into a powerbomb, powerbomb on the knees. Of course, these are all these false finishes. They're just working to the end. And because this is round three, this is the, the last one. Gets distracted by the referee, gets caught up, and kicks out of that schoolboy. Every one of these pins is going to mean something because this is last round. This, this is for all all the marbles that you can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, just to kind of piggyback on your comment about the pace, uh, it's methodical. I was expecting when you brought this match up just to be constant movement, super fast, but the methodical pace, the way he works the crowd makes the fast stuff more meaningful. It seems like. And that's it. And that's, isn't oh. that, that's yeah, beautiful, beautiful suplex. Almost like uh, a big boss man would a black hole slam out of a catch out of the um, catch him in a cross there cross body catch yeah. you know big boss man slam um, yeah you know and that's and that's the thing that like um, wrestling is smoke and mirrors as much as it is you can go a million miles an hour but you can also if you're injured and you want to um, um, preserve yourself a little bit but still work this is these are all techniques. These guys, are, of course, aren't injured. This is just Perro's style. But that is such a great way to, um, to avoid injury and keep going or be injured and still be able to work at a very athletic pace 
that um, is very, uh, like, very deceiving. Like, you would never think that um, his, uh, like, the pace would be uh, slow at all. Even though it is very, very paced, everything they're doing means something, uh, and, but they are very explosive. Now, this is Mystico's finish was the arm breaker where he would have like a, a Japanese arm bar, as I call them, um, where he would be reefing on the arm, uh, whereas uh, almost like a, into a, like you could go for a cross face, but it was just an arm breaker, basically. So that's all they're doing now. This is all this match is going to be. There's going to be very little strikes. There's going to be no chain wrestling whatsoever. Uh, it's just going to be two guys battling. Um, uh, for the win for that last pin. So very much all their, all their cool stuff, all their crazy uh, spots were done earlier where they're getting themselves over Pero being the bigger, stronger suplex guy, a mystico doing his planches and stuff like that. Um, and th a lot of that stuff was done earlier. Watch this, Scott. If you think that this is a crazy bump, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a crazy bump. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> 619 on the outside catches him in the head. Of course, he, uh, he figures out how he's supposed to position. Uh, and then he just mule kicks him as he does the acai moonsault off the ropes and then catches him. So now, now he's ripping at the mask. Now we got more heel type action. Um, another thing, of course, this is televised and stuff like that over there so people can see it. But uh, I do love it when Pero actually takes him in the ring and then puts him up on the top rope. I used to, I wrestled uh, a Blue Demon Jr., who is a legend in uh, Mexico. I did wrestle him in Toronto at a Mexican festival, and there was over, like, I do believe, two to 3,000 people there. there it, was, it was an immense crowd outside. Um, and then I was uh, smart enough in my career to know that all my, all my style of wrestling would be uh, wouldn't be seen because they were all standing. So like mm. when everybody's standing, it's hard to see stuff that's mat based wrestling. And I knew enough uh, to do so. So when I got the heat on blue demon, the only thing that I did was put him up on that top rope just so I could tear out his mask and untie his mask. Nice. And that was my heat. Essentially that was on my heat. I didn't have to beat him up. I just had to try to unmask him. Yeah. And I had all the heat in the world. Nice. And that's, that's basically that, like the heat comes in different ways. You don't have to uh, punch a guy a thousand times. You don't have to power bomb a guy a thousand times. Heat is just, just trying to take that mask off him. something that is super important to him. Um, it definitely was definitely a highlight for me. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a Lucha guy. I'm, I don't run well with uh, the Lucha style. However, I can make it work. <laughs> But within the parameters of how I do my stuff. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, sweet reversal Whoa. into Mahi Straw Cradle. See the explosion? Yeah. People think this is it because of the pace they take on. They think that false finish would be the end of it. Uh, brilliant, brilliantly done where Mystico goes for that Mahi Straw Cradle. Of course, he just rolls back and then he rolls off. Oh, man. Sweet bump by that referee. <laughs> yeah. It's a sweet bump. Oh. Rips off his mask. Pulls him into the uh, small package. Of course, that's going to be a count of five, as we always say, the King Kong Bundy. One, two, three, four, five, just to get it over. Referee's back in the ring. And, of course, one, two, kicks out. Great, great wrestling right there. What a great spot. Rips off his mask. That distracts him enough that he can get it. However, he held onto his mask, and so he could get it. Right, here's the finish. Of course, he goes um, that – that whirly bird or, or that head scissors into his arm bar finish for a two out of three falls. Your winner is Mystico. Great, great ending. Beautiful ending to that match. Well played. Yeah. And the fans go bananas. And the fans go bananas as they always do. It's a good family event there. It looks like in Mexico, parents holding children and everything, all age ranges. I like, like I said, like what, like I was talking about before, like this is very much uh, traditional uh, Mexican wrestling is family oriented and very religious. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're going to find old people, young people, babies. There'll be babies. You'll see see that little yeah. baby right there, just a wee <laughs> little thing. Yeah, it's just a part. It's very much a part of their life. 
which it makes it even a, a stronger tradition, it makes it a very strong tradition. Yeah. Of course, they're, they're going to be closing up, but that is the end of that match. So I'm sure I don't understand L'Espanol, as I said before. <laughs> Mine is, goes as far as going as soon and Rojo because of the kids and Dora. That's all I know. His color, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're not going to translate Amarillo. this for us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Rio being yellow. I don't know. That's all I got. Um, but yeah, just uh, like a massive crowd. This was back in the um, early 2000s where they were making a lot of money. Uh, Misco and uh, Pero were at the top of their uh, respected sides being Technico and Rudo. Uh, and they just, they, they, uh, they ruled CMLL. CMLL at the time ruled the world. Oh, Dirty attack from behind. Of course, of course it is. Of course, it's yeah. going to be all kinds of nonsense after the fact, but because you got to, you got to make sure the heat stays, the heel stays strong and yeah. stays big even after losing a match. But a, a great way, a great story of how to tell it, and then we do that a lot in pro wrestling, where uh, if you want to keep the the heel strong, because he's he's your main guy, he's your big big time guy. It was miscue where they drop kicked that referee. He takes that sweet bump to the floor, and then Peril won the match. He ripped the mask off. That's enough distraction to roll him into a small package. So really, technically, if you look at it, they both won because they both had a fall apiece, uh, and it looked like Peril was going could have won that thing, but of course the referee wasn't there, mm -hmm. uh, and that distraction of the referee getting back in and taking that count of two, and then the kick out leads into the actual finish it just it just makes it very it's seamless it makes it very nice so, so now both guys could go away from that match still being on top of the game yeah right on. well booked easy booked easily booked uh easy to do when you have a two or three falls type match but like i said before we did in mexico they follow the two out of three falls uh point system anyways they're always gonna they, a lot of these matches will do that especially for televised stuff um, yeah, just uh, fun to watch. That one is fun to watch because uh, a lot of people get on me about like not liking high fly, and I constantly correct them and say I do not. I do like high fly. I do like, but I do like high fly that is done correctly. And in that match, it's done very, very well. Where it looks like he's using his body as a human weapon, uh, always diving on him uh, in a realistic fashion. He's not just jumping at him. Um, and having Paro look like a jerk just catching him. So, yeah, yeah, nice. So, that, uh, yeah, and I like the diversity you're bringing into the, the matches we're watching here with got classic North American style, well, classic to me, I guess, being from North America. But uh, then we went to Japan, we've gone to the UK, and now to Mexico here. Uh, is there any other like regions or cultural um, areas that have their own style of wrestling that we haven't hit yet? You know what? There is a lot. <laughs> we probably won't go over some of them because some of them are just uh, I, I go with reality based pro wrestling because that's what I like to teach and I like to focus on. Yep. But there are like um, like even in Africa, they have um, promotions in Africa. And I, I did not know about this until uh, a year ago. So it's it's even new to me. Uh, people, but I love it. I love, I love that people have pro wrestling in their lives, and, but it's a different culture. So in Africa, they do it with voodoo. Okay. So um, uh, the guys will wrestle matches, but then they have implements in the match with voodoo. So guys will cast spells on their opponents, and their opponents will be hypnotized sometimes and um, look, cluck like a chicken. I don't know. Like... <laughs> Just a bit, like to me, very obscure, very weird. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, it's not, I'm not saying that I don't like it. I, it's a, it's a cultural thing. It's yeah. someone else's culture. I just, it's hard to, it's hard to grasp, but I, I do, do enjoy the fact that wrestling is uh, prominent in other areas, even places that it might not have been in the past. Like there is uh, wrestling in Russia now. Like uh, I've, there's a few uh, promotions, not big ones, of course, because we're talking about more Russia, but there's <laughs> definite uh, rush, like there's promotions in Russia, South Africa, um, like all over the world now. Um, so it's kind of neat to see how uh, people view it um, 
uh, in in this day and age. And then being with internet and phones and stuff like that and social media, you can kind of see like glimpses of uh, wrestling in other countries and how they perceive wrestling to be. It's kind of neat. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. It's a worldwide thing. I mean, if there's one thing people understand, it's innately, it's fighting. Like we all know what a fight looks like. We all can understand what a fight is. Uh, I think that's why wrestling's worldwide. Also, also why like, things like MMA have taken off is we just all understand whether we've been punched in the face or not, what it would be like to be punched in the face. It, uh, it's universal. Very much so. And it's uh, like, it's all about being com- combative. Um, people enjoy being combative because that's, that's what life is, is um, uh, it, life is a bit of a struggle and a little bit of a battle mm-hmm. in everyday life. So this is what they, the, in, we're talking about like wrestling. It's just, it gives people a chance to um, uh, sit down and kind of dissect uh, uh, that, li- that side of life. And even though they don't have to experience for themselves, they, they're entertained by it because everybody's in, t- in like uh, entertained by like some form of fight in, of some sort or mm-hmm. at least curious. Right. So. Yep. It's uh, it's like the old us being Canadian boys. The old thing about hockey: no one's sitting down during a fight. Everyone, yeah. <laughs> as much as some people say they want to get rid of it, you don't see anybody sitting down eating popcorn when there's a fight. Nope. Everyone, everyone's paying attention, wants to see what's happening. So you it's can't the, have uh, hockey unless you have fights. No, it goes hand in hand. It's like fighting is the universal language of uh, of humans. Yep, it really is. Yeah, right enough. That was a good match. Really enjoyed that, and it, like I said, it kind of hits another area, another culture, another style of wrestling that we hadn't talked about before that some of the young guys that are looking, the guys and girls looking to get into the business or improve their skills can hopefully take some, uh, some away from that. And like you said, just kind of not copying anything specifically or a hundred percent, but just taking little things from here and there and piecing together your own style, your own uh, kind of gimmick. So uh, I think people find some value out of that one. And anything else you want to add to that match before we uh, move on for the day? No, you know what? That's that's we pretty much wrapped that one up. That one's a simple one because it's based, It's very simple. It's simple in structure and mm-hmm. simple in uh, in delivery. It's it's good. It's very good. Um, but if you're looking to do uh, more uh, on the lines of uh, pro wrestling in Mexico, if you want to look more lucha libre stuff, if you just it, it, you click on CMLL, they have lots of highlight packages. There's AAA that's. Uh, over in it's just AAA if anybody's looking to look for some stuff uh, AAA wrestling in Mexico as well as the other company there's a few little offs I know Conan has a company over there as well um, there's there's a bunch so uh, if you if this if this intrigues you I do encourage you to check out more stuff because uh, some of the craziest uh, athleticism uh, when it comes to uh, flips and dives and catching like diving on a person and hooking body parts and stuff like that is found in that region. And it's, uh, if it's done well, it's done very, very well. And these guys are very, very tough and very well trained. Um, and it's, it is very cool to watch. It's not always for me, but it, I definitely, I do encourage everybody to learn more about, uh, all facets of the game. So definitely, definitely check some more of that stuff out. Right on. And just, you mentioned tough guys there. Um, there's kind of a thing about Mexican boxers that they're super tough guys. Um, is that kind of translate to Mexican wrestlers as well? Are they seen as specifically tough guys as, as, um, as a whole, or, I mean, obviously everyone in the wrestling business is tough to a degree. It's not a business for snowflakes as you sometimes put it. Um, but is there like regions where guys are known to be specifically tougher than others or is it kind of hit and miss depending where you're coming from? I think nowadays, like uh, we were talking about not being snowflakes in this business. This is about like 2020 has probably been the most accumulative uh, time for people that shouldn't be in the wrestling business to be in the (laughs) wrestling business. Unfortunately, there's a lot of snowflakes uh, that uh, just don't seem to melt right away because everybody makes it uh, nice and cool and comfortable for them uh, <laughs> and keep the heat off them. Uh, but, and because of this anti-bullying nonsense, but again, as I always say, I'm going to digress on that because eventually it's going to have to come back to 
uh, circle back to a little bit of balance because we have zero balance uh, in anything anymore. I feel as though <laughs> everything <laughs> is uh, like way off kilter in life. Um, but yes, uh, I, it's now it, this is not coming from uh, anything, but if you're in uh, usually uh, geometrically, if you're working in areas that there is uh, less money and there's a little bit more poverty stricken areas, um, you are going to find tougher human beings mm -hmm. because they are not, <laughs> they are not given the same um, soft upbringing or the same amount like the some when you have to fight to eat or if you have to fight to get home from school or go to school or both you're just going to naturally be tougher creatures and that is the same with mexican wrestlers yeah for the most part uh anybody that comes out of the uh the mexican style and stuff like that is usually a really gritty tough they're they're tough as nails kind of human beings. And it, it, even if they're not the toughest, they're the, not the strongest, they certainly are not going to back down from like engaging in such a, in a warfare of some sort. They're just generally tougher. And that's, that just goes with uh, how, how your upbringing. Like I, I was born in New Brunswick. I'm not considered a tough human being. However, my father worked the, worked the snot out of me, like worked me to death from the age of nine uh, since his leg was bad and he needed um, somebody to pull the weight of like physical activity and physical work. That was me. And that's why I am built the way I am. So I'm built on hard work where some of these guys from Mexico are built on just being straight up tough guys. And it's, uh, it's neat. It's neat to watch. It's neat to need to see that it's how it transpires in life. Yeah. Just, yeah. When life's harder, toughens you up obviously so toughens you up yeah that's uh right on that's kind of what i figured was, makes total sense um question of the show forgot one last week again i apologize you got anything off the uh top of your head for the question of the show oh yeah because uh, we're coming up on a special thing for us because hey we're coming oh, yeah. up on uh, episode 10 <laughs> i forgot i was what are you coming up what do you go where are you going here now i remember we did talk about this yeah, we did. Scotty, my mind. We, are, we are on episode 10. 10 is coming up. This is 9. We're up on 10. And this is uh, kind of a big deal because for us, as we discussed this, Scott, going, uh, like going into these things, we were just going to give it to 10 and see how we did and see if we had a good rapport and um, if we're all firing on the same cylinders and if people were enjoying it. So we decided that, like, let's do to 10 and then see where we go from here. Of course, uh, for all those listening, we will be taking it further on. We're going to keep keep going down the, down the well of pro wrestling. However, we wanted to – we discussed it, and this was Scotty's idea. We want to uh, do episode 10 uh, where I break down one of my matches. Or two. Or two. <laughs> or two. Yeah. Whatever, whatever the case may be. So uh, that being said, the question of the day is very simply, uh, if you are a Tyson Dukes fan or not, I don't even care if you're not a fan. If, you, if there's something that you want to watch that has Tyson Dukes in it, myself in that match, um, we will be breaking down one of my matches for episode 10 or two of them, uh, depending on what you pick. Uh, so whatever it is from old, from new, uh, we're giving we're giving the ball to you. Let's let's see what you got. Um, like nothing is off limits. We can hit anything from my early career where it's dancing and it's kind of silly uh -huh. uh, to uh, older and bitter and serious. <laughs> yeah. Take what you take what you will yeah. and uh, let's have it. And I actually kind of hope there's some haters listening. I don't uh, I haven't heard much hate yet. Um, I would love to have some, some suggestions from some haters of yours, but I don't know if there's that many out there. We have definitely haven't heard from them, but yeah, oh, if you're, there, there is a, there if you're is a hater one. lurking, if you're lurking <laughs> in the grass, make yourself known. Uh, yep. Let's hear it. And uh, let's get some, I, I just like the conflict. So if there's any haters out there, speak up or forever um, hold your peace. But yeah, any, uh, any Tyson matches you want to see, get broken down or any just general questions too. May as well send them in for this next episode. We'll do a Q and a and some 
breakdowns of some Tyson Dukes matches on episode 10. Looking forward to that for sure. Uh, so that, I guess that's the question of the day. What match, what Tyson Dukes match you want to see us break down on the next show? Any other stories about Mexican uh, wrestling? You had the one match you mentioned. Do you, have you done a lot of uh, other Lucha matches? Uh, the only one that was with my like drizzling shits um, appearances with Impact Wrestling, I guess. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I never speak fondly of my Impact uh like being in uh, impact uh, the talent was amazing and the, the staff is great and stuff like that it has nothing to do with that but uh, uh always a rock and a hard place always uh the uphill struggle to make anything work at impact or have anybody take me uh seriously there so uh, when i was a part of team international we were uh, it was me and davari as a tag and uh, they had me bump uh, all day with Frank Trigg, the old MMA guy. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a great dude. I haven't seen Frank in years, but he was a great guy. Uh, but we had to work on his spot that he was supposed to do with AJ Styles, where they're setting up this MMA-style match. And I was uh, uh, a bump dummy for Frank, and it, it was hours. I bumped for hours by this big guy just giving me suplexes like not always right and then taking other suplexes from other guys trying to show them and uh of course i'm like trying to get a job so i'm there bumping for hours and then i have to go put a match together with davari and me and davari have had great sean davari and me have had great matches against each other but we have never tagged together so they just threw us together in a tag against the the well uh, worked out team of uh, Motor City Machine Guns. They were great. Um, their style is very much a different style than I do. I don't do the plan too much ahead. I don't. I can't have my feet. I don't want to remember where my feet have to be. I want to know how to. I want to be able to sell. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to know that Davari's got to be on my left side for this next spot. I just want to be able to run uh, wrestling the way I like wrestling, like real reality based instead of uh, a little bit uh, high paced, uh, crazy style. Uh, but that was the machine gun style. So we, we did the machine gun style, the match fell apart. And then by the end of it, I wasn't even selling anymore. I was actually feeding into stuff too early because I was just getting in the habit of doing their stuff, their choreographed style uh, stuff. So uh, never, never really a great, never a great moment when it came to uh, working with Impact. Never really had uh, given the chance to grab the ball and go with it. But uh, that I had that match, and then I'm like, oh well, maybe on the pay per view when I do the pay per view because I'm signed with the company, maybe it'll be better because they'll put me with Doug Williams. So me and Doug Williams were supposed to be a tag there as the Commonwealth. Of course, that got shut down. We had this massive um uh tag team <laughs> it was like a gauntlet tag team match where they had mexicans and they had the japanese and they had international they had all everybody they had all sorts of um players in this thing and then we would eliminate uh one by one so your tag you you would be in the corner with your tag guy and then you tag in and you'd run a spot and then you'd get eliminated. Of course, Tyson Dukes is eliminated first because why not? Why would we want to highlight him at all? And it was with the two Mexican guy, Mexican guys, uh, Ray Bucanero and Ultimo Guerrero. And Ultimo Guerrero is another guy. If you check him out, Ultimo Guerrero is just a, like a phenomenal wrestler, just great. Like for a luchador, a luchador like one of the best. And so me and, uh, and Ray and um, Guerrero are in the ring together and we plan out the stuff or we have the stuff and we worked it out and that was it. That was the end of my day, but it was, it was quite, it was still a great moment for me because I got to enjoy uh, even if it was only for about 60 to 45 seconds of work with uh, Bucanero and Guerrero, it's neat to be in there with guys that have been, in the business a long time from a region. And like I said before, like if you are in the business and you know of some person's name in a completely different country, that's, that's, that means they have some kind of value. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, like that was, 
those are my basically my experiences. I don't have very very many experiences with luchadors because I'm um, not lucha based, but yeah. uh, Blue Demon Junior and Ray Bacanero and Ultimo Guerrero. I thank you, good gents. Uh, it was wonderful to work with all three. Right on. Good stories. The, uh, so I guess that will do it for this episode. Thanks again to everyone for listening. We really appreciate it. If you are listening on YouTube, uh, leave us any questions, comments, feedback down below. Hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell. That lets you know anytime something gets uploaded. Sometimes if you're subscribed, you don't get the notifications. So make sure to hit both. And if you're listening on a podcast network, iTunes, Spotify, anything like that, you can send us feedback to hammerlockpodcast at gmail.com or you send them directly to Tyson on Twitter at Tyson Dukes. You can also send them to hammerlockpod. Until next time, we'll catch you later.